Hello everyone, my name is Kitty and I'm here today to share with you how I made this pink princess regency cottage core inspired dress. Of course this dress was made totally on a whim. I have been loving all of the princess core and cottage core dresses out there so I felt inspired to make something for myself. Um, of course the pattern is just something I tweaked based on my Bridgerton dress. I just changed the pattern so that I could add a drawstring to the neckline and waist that would be a little more comfy and easy to put on. I, of course, will be sharing my full process and pattern for you to use. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. But otherwise, let's get started. For the design of the dress, I wanted it to have an empire waist, something very inspired by Regency designs. And I wanted it to close in the back with drawstrings that would go along the neckline and the underbust and I wanted there to be large puff sleeves with lots of extra drama. And I was thinking of adding a train in the back. It just sort of depends on how much fabric I have. For materials, I'm going to be using about five meters of this light pink crinkle satin, which is just gorgeous, and a matching thread. Now I'm going to be making my drawstrings out of the same fabric, that way everything matches. But of course you could opt for ribbons or elastic if you prefer. To create the pattern, I used large scraps of fabric, pens, and a marker. I started by draping my fabric on my mannequin and pinning it in place. Then I used my scissors and marker to sort of draw and cut the shape of the bodice until I was satisfied. As I was draping, I was keeping in mind the bodice pattern I had made for my Bridgerton dress since I also wanted this bodice to have a single front and side piece and an iconic diamond regency shaped back piece. I was also mindful of creating a rounded neckline that scooped down in the front with extra room for the drawstring to create gathers along the bust. And after I finished draping it, I removed it from my mannequin and cleaned it up just by tidying up the drawn lines and cut edges. And here is my finished bodice pattern. The front you can see is extended for all that extra gathering and it has a nice scooped front and then sort of the Regency back piece. You can also see it compared to my Bridgerton pattern. I'm going to use the same sleeve pattern that I used for my Bridgerton dress and I'm just going to extend the bottom edge by about five or six inches. Now I'm ready to cut all my pieces out. I start with my fabric folded down the center and first cut out my back skirt piece. The back of my skirt is one full width of fabric so that there's lots of extra room to create pleats on the back of the bodice. I've also extended it to about 60 inches with the bottom edge rounded for a train. Now the front piece of my skirt is about 47 inches long and is about 16 inches wide at the top but then tapered down to the full width of fabric for a little extra volume. The front piece of my skirt is also cut on the fold. I then cut out my bodice pieces, both the front and back on the fold, and I cut out my sleeve with a little extra width and length for lots of extra volume. And finally, I cut out six strips of fabric that will be used as edging and drawstrings for my dress. One will be used for the neckline edge, one will be used for the neck drawstring, one will be used for the waistband, and one will be used for the waist drawstring, and two will be used as sleeve bands. Make sure to cut out the drawstring pieces extra long. And here I have everything cut out, my edges, my drawstrings, my bodice pieces front and back, my sleeves, and my two skirt pieces so we can start assembling. I'm gonna start by assembling the sleeves and I just like to attach that band to the bottom of the sleeve. Then gather the bottom edge of the sleeve to the sleeve band. Make sure the right side of the sleeve band is touching the wrong side of the sleeve. After gathering the bottom edge of the sleeve onto the sleeve band, you can now fold the sleeve band over two times and then top stitch it down, securing it in place over top the gathers 
which will create a finished clean cuff. With the bands attached to my sleeves, I can now start assembling the bodice using French seams. First, I sew the shoulder strap of the front of my bodice to the back piece of my bodice. With wrong sides touching, I straight stitch the shoulders together and then trim any extra seam allowance. Next, I fold the seam over and straight stitch the shoulder one more time. This will enclose the raw edge and make a clean, finished seam along the shoulder. Next, I add the edging to my neckline of my bodice. I use one strip of fabric like bias tape to finish the neckline and make a channel for the drawstring. Starting at the center back of my bodice, I pin the right side of my strip of fabric to the wrong side of the neckline of my bodice. I'm also making sure that both sides of the edges of my strip of fabric are finished. I then pin it all around the neckline and stitch it down in place. And I'm very careful to make sure that the back edges of my strip of fabric perfectly meet together. Next, I fold over that strip of fabric two times to hide the raw edge and then pin it in place on top of the previous stitching. After it's pinned down, I stitch it, securing it in place and finishing the channel so that I can later add a drawstring. Now before sewing the sides of my bodice pieces together, I am going to attach my sleeves. Here I will also be using French seams, so I want to work very carefully, but feel free to use a different method to attach your sleeves to your bodice. I start by pinning my sleeve along the armpit curve of the front of my bodice piece, making sure wrong sides are touching. I want the other side of the sleeve to end at the shoulder seam the shoulder seam that joins the front and back bodice pieces together. So I focus the gathers of the sleeve on the six inches before that shoulder seam. After pinning everything in place, I carefully stitch along the sleeve to the bodice using my small scissors to make small gathers. Then I trim away any extra seam allowance flip the fabric over on that seam and stitch again to create an enclosed seam. Next, I attach the side of my bodice and sleeves together using one long French seam. I start at the armpit and match the sides of my bodice together and then the sides of my sleeve together, making sure wrong sides are touching. And again, after pinning everything in place, I stitch, trim, flip, and stitch again to enclose the raw edges and create a nice finished seam. This seam is going to run from the cuff of your sleeve all the way down the side of your bodice. 
at this point your bodice is looking really good and is ready for the skirt and then the waistband to be attached. So first I prepare my skirt by sewing the sides together using French seams. Next, I match the center front of my bodice to the center front of my skirt, again making sure wrong sides are touching. I pin the skirt smoothly along the bottom edge of the bodice, pinning it in place, and then I focus all the extra fabric in the back into making pleats. Once the skirt is pinned to the bodice, I stitch it together. Now at this point, you could finish this seam as a French seam, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. I first zigzag stitch the two edges together to finish them and prevent any unraveling. I then fold over the seam allowance towards the bodice and top stitch the seam allowance down onto the bodice. I am keeping this seam on the outside of my dress since I will be covering it with the waistband later. Now I am turning my three remaining strips of fabric into tubes or ribbons. One will be used as a waistband and two will become drawstrings. Please make sure your drawstrings are plenty long. I start by sewing the two long edges together and then I use a safety pin to turn them inside out. I then push in the raw edges and top stitch them closed. Now along the seam on the waist or under bust of my dress, I'm going to pin one of these tubes down, matching it over top and covering the seam. Once pinned down, I top stitch along the bottom edge and then the top edge of the added tube to both cover the previous seam and create a channel for the drawstring. Now using the two other tubes or ribbons that we created, we can feed them into the channels we made for the drawstring. I like to use a safety pin and carefully work them through those channels. Once your drawstrings have been added, you can adjust the gathers to your preference and then tie two cute bows in the back. Now all that's left to do is trim the bottom edge of your skirt to your desired length and give it a simple rolled hem. So now let's see how the finished dress looks.
much for watching this video. If you like this video and would like to see other fun DIY videos, please like and subscribe. Of course, I will be sharing more princess and cottagecore inspired videos, so definitely stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.